Kate. Hey. It's Felix. Hi, how's it going? You can't sleep on data governance. Oh, that's true. Hello, everybody. This is Kate Stashny from Dedicated. I'm in New York City at Calibra's Data Citizens on the Road event. I'm here with Felix, co-founder and CEO of Calibra. Very happy to have you here with me again, Felix. I know we chatted about six months ago at another event. Absolutely. Great to be here. Yes. I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing about all the updates. Um, you just got off the stage. Yes. So thanks, thanks for, for doing this. You know, I was really inspired by the conversations that you had and the new slogan of AI powered governance everywhere. Yes. Tell my audience, what do you mean by that? Well, AI powered governance everywhere. Uh, one, uh, we believe that governance is becoming more and more important, right? Uh, and I think a lot of organizations are now having to deal with what I call an increased complexity in their landscape and the ecosystem because of AI. Uh, the, the pace of innovation, the pace of change, technology change is increasing. Uh, it's not just analytical data anymore. There's, there's unstructured data, there's application data to support agentic AI. So there's a lot of complexity. So how do we make sure uh, we govern not just the data, but also the AI, the use cases, all of those different data workloads and do that everywhere across all these different platforms, which is really important. This is the, the everywhere on the, the producing side of the data. I think equally important the everywhere on the consuming side of the data, not just again for analytical workloads, but also for AI workloads as well. And also a, a big belief that we have in our mission to what I call connect data producers with data consumers. How do we bring that highly curated, high quality business context, semantic, semantics, to wherever people are doing the work. And that's a core part of our vision. We don't want anybody to have to log into Colibra, but ultimately we take what's in Colibra to where they're doing the work. So that's a lot of the everywhere uh, components. Right. Yeah. yeah. And on the AI powered, happy to kind of uh, uh, talk about that as well, because yeah. again, doing that, we need to do governance at scale. And I would argue doing governance manually, it just doesn't scale anymore. It's too much work. It's too expensive. So how do we drive more automation? And this is also what we believe with AI powered governance, where I believe data stewards or data owners should become editors, not authors. Yeah. And so we su should suggest what we believe they should do using AI and they become the hu human in the loop mm -hmm. instead of having to do the work all by themselves. Yeah, I really love that slogan. I, I, I took my notes earlier today and when you said that they should be editors, not authors. Explain a little bit more if you can give an example as well. of. Yeah, so if you think about what does a, a data steward, to use that term, typically do? Uh, often they, they capture business context initially through a business glossary. So how do we create definitions? Well, people shouldn't create definitions anymore. We should be able to create a definition also given a lot of specific context. So using uh, PDF documents, standards, policies that an organization already have, we should use that as context to generate an appropriate specific definition. And then it's under the steward to start from that definition, potentially edit it and ultimately save it. So you become an editor, not an author. Another big thing I think a lot of the stewards do, which we announced um, uh, today, is they need to create a logical model, a semantic layer that requires a lot of work. Even if they already have, if the organization already has a logical model, how do you link that to your physical metadata? It's a lot of work. So again, how do we do that for them? And they become the human in the loop to either approve, reject, and change versus kind of starting from zero and, and do that work from scratch. Yeah, I love that. And I, I wonder, will there be a time where those stewards no longer have to do any editing as well? No authors, no editors? I, I don't think so. Okay. I, I think it's I think there's there's definitely more room to go, but if it's fully automated, I think a big part of, of governance ultimately somebody has to make a decision. Right. And that's ultimately the value of governance, right? If you think about the definition, the simple one of a customer. Yes, you can generate that definition, but if we accept it and none of the organization actually adopts it, it has no value. Right. The value is in the organization making the decision that this is how we define a customer. We should create the options of what the definition should be, but that needs to be ultimately accepted and rolled out. And so I think, I still think that there's a level of human in the loop that's absolutely necessary to yeah. drive that change, but we can definitely reduce that significantly. Mm -hmm. For sure. I think one of the more exciting pieces of news that you talked about today was the capability to work with unstructured data, yes. especially when it comes to AI and the fact that, you know, we ask a lot of questions and we ask the agents to do a lot of actions. So talk about how Calibra is dealing with unstructured data. Uh, absolutely. It's a, it's a massive problem. We kind of knew it was there for a long time. 
it was always interesting that they, they felt like two different worlds because I think we had so much work to do on the structured analytical use cases that we, we kind of could ignore unstructured data. Yeah. I don't think that's an option anymore. With AI, I think uh, there's so much unstructured data. We all know that we all know the statistics, 80 to 90% of an organization's data is unstructured. Uh, we have to um, address a lot of the, the same challenges we, we had around structured data. We have to know where it is. So there's a discovery component. And yes, I'm sure many organizations have thousands, if not millions of files in SharePoint. And so how do you wrangle that? Then how do we curate it? How do we think about the quality of unstructured data? Uh, how do we think about the privacy and, and security components of unstructured data? How do sensitive data an an analysis of that unstructured data? How do you add more context? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think how do you ultimately add structure to unstructured uh, data? And this is really kind of where we're really excited about this capability to do that at scale and do it automatically using a Gen AI first approach versus yeah. the, I mean, we've had um, what I call flat tags with regex expressions forever, yeah. but that doesn't cut it in, 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 the, in the complexity nowadays. Right. So let me give you an example. This yes. goes back to when I had a job in consulting and okay. we had a massive SharePoint full of PDFs, full of, you know, helpful knowledge articles that we could potentially use. Yes. Um, but it was very hard. It was very hard because if we were looking for something very specific, like a pitch deck, we would have to go into SharePoint, click on a bunch of articles, click on PDFs, PowerPoint. Some of them don't even open, right? Yep. For some reason, yeah. security issues. So now how does Calibra help? The, can you make this searchable? Can you make this queryable? Absolutely. So the way we think about this, there's almost like an engine that takes unstructured documents. Could be PDFs, could be images, could be emails, lots of different uh, modalities. And we parse that to the engine and the engine actually adds structure to that data. Now you're in control of how to add structures. We, we actually have rich semantic taxonomies. It's not just flat text, but actually rich semantic te taxonomies that can add that structure. And then once that structure is, is, is created, you can push that back to wherever you want to use that structure. So in the case of SharePoint, we can push it back into SharePoint. And so using kind of SharePoint's native capabilities of capturing those tags. And so when you're just using in SharePoint, suddenly all of your documents automatically yeah. are going to be tagged and classified correctly with that right context. But that's just one use case. Let's say if I'm, if I'm um, uh, you know, developing an AI uh, uh, chatbot interface, right? And I want to I wanna have a curated set of documents, right? And I want to, what I think, what we think is you want to develop almost a knowledge product. Mm -hmm. You don't just want to capture every document, put it in a, in a rack database and think it's going to work. It's not. You want to curate that. You want to build a knowledge product. So you want to measure the quality, add more context. And add context that might not be relevant for humans, but actually add context that's relevant for rag architecture, for AI, for the models to actually improve the accuracy of what they're delivering. So there's a lot of different use cases that we can think of, of how to apply that kind of engine and the capability. Okay, amazing. And uh, what's the availability of some of these new features that you announced today? Are they all available today? They're all available today. Uh, in our October uh, release, some of them are uh, our public preview, which means all of our customers can use it. Uh, we have a higher bar on, on what we call GA, so we want to continue to work with uh, with our customers to evolve them. But all of them are available uh, today, either in GA or in, uh, in public preview. Amazing. Yeah. Well, Felix, can you please tell the audience a little bit about where they can go to learn more and some resources or demos, whatever they can get their hands on? Yeah, absolutely. So go to our website, colibra.com, and you can navigate to what we call our innovation page, which has an overview of all of our recent innovations with, with demo movies, with uh, kind of additional uh, context and, and content to kind of dig in. Mm -hmm. And of course, we love to hear from you, so you can always reach out and we love to uh, provide more information on everything that, we, uh, that we've released. Great. Well, Felix, thank you so much for your time today. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.